Chapter 3 War The Society of Friends did not allow its members to marry people who were not Quakers. They wanted their community to stick together. John was successful. He had opened his own upholstery shop and became a good family. Or, and he came from a good family. But instead of the Society of Friends, John went to the Church of England. Because of that, Betsy's parents were against her marriage to John. Betsy and John eloped. They crossed the Delaware River to the nearby Gloucester, New Jersey. On November 4th, 1773, beside a large wood fireplace and an inn called Hugs Tavern, they became man and wife. After her marriage, Betsy was forced to leave the Quakers. They asked her twice to apologize for marrying Ross, but she refused. She was not going to say she was sorry that she fell in love. Betsy joined John's church, Christ Church on 2nd Street in Philadelphia. She left Mr. Webster's shop and began working alongside John. Betsy and John started their married life at a very exciting time in Philadelphia. The anger in America over the tea tax and other insults was growing. Citizens wanted to band together to force a change. In the summer of 1774, colonial leaders gathered in Philadelphia. They came from the other colonies to plan their next move. In fact, these men wanted America to split from Great Britain and form an independent country. To take the steps toward independence, they met at the Continental Congress. It was the first time that leaders from each colony had come together to discuss their dreams for a new nation. The Congress sent a letter to King George demanding the right to life, liberty, and property. Colonial Government each of the 13 colonies was formed by different groups of settlers. They choose different ways of running their colonies. Virginia, for example, had a governor and elected representatives. Maryland let only landowners vote. New York usually had one leader who made most of the decisions for the colony. To form these colonies into a single nation, however, colonial leaders had to first decide on one form of government. Each colony except Georgia sent representatives to the First Continental Congress. There they agreed that they wanted to be one nation separate from England. King George ignored it. Many people realized that the only way America could break from British rule would be to fight. In Philadelphia and many other cities, men began gathering weapons and training to fight. John Ross was among them. Ross and men like him became, became known as Minutemen. They were regular citizens who had not been a part of any formal army, but they trained after work so that they could be ready in a minute, if called into action. Most were young men. Every small village or settlement had its own unit of Minutemen. The Minutemen soon had put down their rakes and aprons and picked up their guns. The American Revolutionary War began on April 19, 1775 in Lexington, Massachusetts. The Minutemen had clashed with the British troops on a road just outside of Boston. The British soldiers were not in Philadelphia yet, but everyone knew they were coming. Betsy and John worried, but they had to keep working. They made chairs and curtains, they sewed tablecloths for a wedding. But after work each day, John trained with the Minutemen. Early in 1776, John was badly injured. No one is really sure what happened. He may have been hurt by exploding gunpowder that blew up while he was on guard duty. Another version of events simply says simply that he was hurt while training. It is certain that John died of his injuries, and on January 21st, 1776, he was buried in Philadelphia. Betsy Ross was just 24 years old. In the middle of a war, Separated from her faith and her family, she was now a widow too.